back, everybody, to the Bottom Line Podcast. This is episode four. My name is Luca. We got... Are you going to... Me? Uh, no, you got, uh, it. Okay. you got it. You got it. You got it. I'm it. Tony, your mortgage <laughs> broker. I'm Mike, your realtor. Well, I'm your realtor, too. <laughs> Luca, <laughs> we are your real tours. Realtors. Dandel, real uh, Dandel. We got... Uh, we got yeah, Dandel, exactly. We got a sweet episode coming up for you guys. Um, we're going to be talking about Airbnbs. Investing. Investing in Airbnbs. It's a hot topic right now. There's a lot of people who are thinking about, uh, you know, turning their investment properties into Airbnbs. So we're going to talk about what that entails and how you can do it successfully because there's a lot of yeah. Airbnb horror stories that we're going to share with you today. We've done it. We've been through it. We've been through the, the highs and the lows of mm-hmm. Airbnb. So we're definitely going to touch mm-hmm. on that. And, and the highs and lows and hot topic of interest rates, current mortgage mm-hmm. uh, interest rates and where Very they're important. at. And, uh, some ways to get ahead. So we got two hot topics. Two hot topics. And then we'll take it from there. And then we'll we'll, uh, we'll see where that leads us. Um, all right. Why don't uh, we get right into it then? Let's, let's talk, talk about, about the those current, rates. Yeah, let's talk about those Talk about rates. them rates. Talk to Yeah, me. right now things are uh, obviously on the uptick, um, both the fixed and the variable tick, side. Tick, uh, tick. They're ticking. <laughs> <laughs> they're going. They're going. And, and it's, um, we're, you know, uh, not uh, too far away from, the next interest rate announcement from the Bank of Canada. That showed yeah. you. And uh, that showed you everything, eh? Sorry, One it shows look. me the date. It shows me the, what date we are. <laughs> What's that do for you? <laughs> What's it do for you? It tells me the time. It tells me everything. Um, long story short, uh, there's an expectation that the rates will go up, if not next week, but uh, before the end of the year. And that that's uh, it's, it's scary for people, right? Even that last hike really pushed people over the edge. And uh, what's causing that to happen, right? So Justin uh, Trudeau. Ju- <laughs> some might no, we're say, not going to get political. Yeah, some might we'll say it's uh, it, it's uh, geopolitical uh, yeah. factors, but it's uh, it's not. <laughs> yeah. It's more. I'm so, not going to say anything. Yeah, I don't want to touch it, that it, subject. It's it's the fact that 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 this is the only tool Bank of Canada has to fight inflation, right? Yeah. They want to get down to two percent. They're steadfast. You like to talk steadfast about steadfast. Steadfast in, their, in goal. their goal to attain two percent. Every every time a new Bank of Canada announcement comes out. First thing I do is I call Tony instantly. Yeah. yeah. And what do we do? We read. We look for that, that word. Last line yeah. of every single announcement. Yeah, we told you. We told you. We told you. Yeah. We wouldn't stop. Till there's it a gets lot there. of fluff when you read that stuff. Yeah. There's a lot it's of lots fluff. Of fluff. Yeah. But if you read that line, that one little line that they're steadfast in their goal of two percent inflation. Yeah. You know that interest rates are gonna. They said the same thing down south, right? In the with the U.S. Uh, are they Federal steadfast? Reserve. They said the same thing. They use the same type of language, and but, it's the same type of language around the world. The, so, yeah. like we were, we were looking at it earlier, right? We're we're here in that that range where it's just over three percent, right? Inflation. In other parts of the world, we're talking in the triple digits. Yeah, of inflation. didn't we just look it up? We saw something. We what? saw, uh, you know, you got Venezuela, which is you know. 400 plus yeah. percent yeah. inflation. You got Zimbabwe, 100 and something. The dollar is uh, paper mache. Yeah. yeah, what were you going to say? Say that yeah, again. Yeah, the dollar is paper mache. You got people on the streets like making teepees <laughs> yeah, out of it. Yeah, yeah. It's like structures. <laughs> Have you seen those videos? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. I saw Useless. it. Where they're, they're making like art out of yeah. it, right? Yeah. It's like dollar bills. literally toilet paper. Yeah, it's yeah. equivalent. Like, uh, toilet paper worth but, more because you could do something. Yeah, exactly. It, right? it has a function. Yeah, right? So, uh, But you have countries like even Turkey who is, you know, uh, you know, it's a pretty strong uh, economy in the in the in Europe, and their inflation rates up at forty seven percent. Yeah. So compared to them. So compared to them, it's like, and this is what the, some of the politicians are saying. You know, we're doing well compared to other parts of the world. However, it's still shit. It's still <laughs> like, very let's call, very. Let's call it what it is. Yeah, it's we're still, still in a very t- challenging honestly, environment. Right. So that variable is really impacted by. Um, the Bank of Canada and their overnight lending rates. Whereas our fixed rates are also going up because in these unprecedented times, in these tough times, uncertain times, people are rushing to buy bonds and the bond yields are just going through the roof. So uh, like the last week, I've had at least six of our top 10 uh, lenders send me you know, rate hikes. Can right? I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah, are ask. a lot of clients trying to lock in right now? 100%. Oh, people are, people are, are scared. And which is fair. Um, it's absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that yeah. because uh, there you, you can't trust anything. Yeah. Nothing makes sense. What's up is down. What's down is up. Yeah. What's left is right. Nothing makes sense. Right. So there so, are people looking for that stability. Yeah. People who are not um, cash flow heavy uh, on a regular basis or they're not high income earners, they are looking for that stability and now they're willing to pay for it. Um, 
most of the, our, our most frequent um, product that's being opted into is a three year fixed, right? Which at as of today is at like six percent. Yeah. Right. And people are opting in for that because they feel like that's just enough time for when things might start to come back down. You got the Tony discount, no? Ah. I don't know about the Tony discount. You got to call them to find out, folks. You can't just, <laughs> we, we can't, we, we can't okay. display everything on this. But you guys thought we were going to talk about everything on this podcast. You got to call them direct. <laughs> that you need to just call for, it, guys. Sometimes, you know, it, it pays to have a conversation. <laughs> Um, but yeah, th- th- those are the main things that influence rates, right? Yeah. The bond yields are on the fixed side and the uh, the Bank of Canada overnight lending rate yeah. influenced heavily by inflation and uh, Fair enough. And, and whatnot. Which, all that still in, it affects our investors, right? Our yeah. investors looking to buy a exactly. property or have a Great property transition. already that want to get maybe turn into an Airbnb perhaps, exactly. right? That's what I was going to so, ask you, Mike. Like, Let's talk about Airbnb investing. Yeah. Obviously, so, we've been through it. Maybe you can shed some light yeah. on, you know, some yeah. things that you. Uh, we've been through. We've had a property in Blue Mountain, we had a nice chalet. Oh yeah, that I one bit that. us in the ass. Oh, it was a good learning learning experience. Yeah, yeah. Like that. it we, was a great investment. Mm-hmm. Let's say that. Yes, mm-hmm. we had a beautiful chalet that overlooked Blue Mountains, like the actual mountains, the Alps. in a beautiful area, <laughs> new community. Those mountains are blue. I'm assuming we were making. <laughs> Good, yeah, good numbers. Good returns. Really good returns. And we got- Always booked. Yeah. Fully occupied. Yeah. Summer. Everyone, and, everyone thinks Blue Mountain. Oh, it's only in the winter. Oh, the no, summer no. was summer jammed. Summer was jammed. Oh, jammed. I think- Just as much as the winter. The Literally, the first week we put it on, we made like seven grand, I think. It yeah. was something ridiculous. You had one month uh, crazy. Yeah. Um, it was It was December. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas. We, had, we were making $1,000 a day that month. It was nuts. Wild. It was nice, but that's the attraction, right? Yeah, that's the attraction people have. Those numbers. We were so we were we were seasoned Airbnb investors at that time because we were doing it in Toronto. Yeah, we had one in Toronto. Yeah, a topical. Yeah, and we had condo. We also had a condo in Toronto, but we'll get into that after. But things were changing, so this is a time where things start to change, and there was a lot more regulation in terms of Airbnb, which there's happening right now. Is a lot of regulation, Mm -hmm. and. in Blue Mountain, Mike, go ahead, tell the story what happened after that. We were making that money in December and yeah. then everything was looking peachy. Looking everything was right. looking peachy. And then just nice little letter <laughs> on the door. What are that? Been, you've been served. No, it's served. Jesus. No, no, but yeah, we had to stop doing Airbnb. We got we got what was the fine? We were breaking a bylaw. Yeah, we broke a bylaw. We yeah. had to stop doing Airbnb. Uh, I think it was no 10, more, no short, no short term rentals, rentals in, this, in that area. That's what happened, right? There yeah, and, and it changed overnight, just like that. No notice, yeah, no yeah. warning. Hey, we know you're doing Airbnb. Nothing so, like well, that. Let's no. get real. Someone rat us out. That's, yeah, that was a neighbor, just a little us. snitch. Yeah, yeah. something. A little something. snake in the grass. <laughs> <laughs> Are we weasel? No, they let, knocked on the door okay, of one me, of our. Let go ahead. Let me preface this. We weren't causing any problems no. in the community it was just families as you can imagine it's blue mountain right families just wanting to go ski except for that one yeah except for that one but that wasn't the problem yeah yeah you got you got a good story <laughs> which one are you talking about the party the oh 3 a.m in the morning you're gonna yeah. get those on airbnb that's the risk of airbnb yeah right yeah. and that's probably part of why these regulations start to come in right you some airbnbs go like sideways quick quick and yeah make the news type of quick stories right yes. like so that's those parties so, kind of go in the condo parties right the, going on that point yeah it's super I, I should say this if you're looking to buy an airbnb investment it's great you should look for your returns obviously you should look in your area to see what the returns are but something more important than that if you're buying to invest on airbnb please know that airbnb is not forever nothing in this world is forever as we know you need to buy a sound investment and what I mean by that is if Airbnb goes sideways, which it did for us, yeah. right? Can you um, do something else with the property? Can you do something else? Can you rent it out yeah. seasonally? Can you, can you tap rent- into it? Yeah. Can you tap into it? Can you rent it out seasonally? Can, can you, you resell in? that property and still have some equity in mm-hmm. there? Can you get out of the situation that you needed to get out of? A lot of people sometimes buy a property that's not desirable at all, mm-hmm. but it makes great Airbnb returns. That's amazing. But what happens when something goes left or right? You're in big trouble. Yeah. So we always encourage when we're searching for our clients, if you're buying an Airbnb property, you need to make sure it's a sound investment mm-hmm. that has appreciation, that could be rented out without Airbnb, that's in a good area, so on and so forth. Yeah. But and what? Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say going back to Mike's uh, story with our with our Airbnb um, that we had in Blue Mountain, we ended up getting fined. I was gonna say just tell yeah. the rest of that story. No, they just well, they just knocked on the door one day, by law. 
and asked the people that were staying there, our guests, like, is this your property? And they, they obviously they said, no, we're just on here from Airbnb. Right? Yeah. Boom. Okay. Booked. Done. Guilty. Right. 20 grand was the fine. 20 grand. Yeah. So that we December month guilty, got washed away real quick. <laughs> yeah. And then we got rid of the property. Yeah. But not that it wasn't a sound investment. Yes. We just couldn't do what, what you we wanted, wanted, what your intention do. was for, yes. right, the, for the property. But this brings area. me back to that point where if, because it was a sound investment, we you were ended able, up being okay. We were able to offload yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then no skin lost. We, and we moved the money somewhere else. Right. But um, also let people know that they want to do Airbnb. There's a lot to it. It's not just buying a property. You got to furnish it. You got to take mm-hmm. good photos. You got to advertise it properly online. You got to price it right. And there's a lot of work involved. Like you got to think of your vacancy the, rates. Yeah, vacancy rates, damages, our condo. Yeah. I remember one day uh, we <laughs> we booked it out to a, a nice young lady, <laughs> and we went to the condo the next day to clean it up, ready for the next guest. And we got in there, and the bed was <laughs> in half. Looked like a pretzel. Yeah, yeah. someone had <laughs> someone had a really good time she on that bed. Sam- <laughs> You get a samurai yeah. sword to it yeah. or what? I don't know. No, what I don't. Happened. She got some type of sword, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you got cut up, eh? Yeah. She burnt our toilet seat. With yeah, our toilet seat was burnt. Yeah. I don't know how that happens, but. Yeah. What? The- yeah. Oh, it was hilarious. Oh, her, yeah. We thought it was her hair. Curling iron. Curling iron. iron. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's know, we, toilet seat. And then she didn't want to pay us. That's uh, another problem, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of issues with Airbnb if things go sideways, sideways yeah. right? It's not, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. Rainbows and butterflies, yeah. As how you see on Instagram. Again, yeah. back to Instagram. I got this Airbnb. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Makes me oh, 20 makes, grand a month. Look. Okay, but those are the like, best, though. Honestly, yeah. those kill me. Twenty. Yeah, I make 20 grand a month. Okay, but what about your off months? What are you making in your off months? Yeah. Three grand, four grand? So what's the average? There's a lot of people, and this goes back to what Mike was saying about the fluff. There's a lot of people that pump up those numbers. Yeah, that's that all say, fluff online. We're making 15 grand a month on Airbnb. Okay, great. You're making 15 grand, what? And you're downtown, you're... July and August making 15 grand. What are you making in November? What are you making in March? That's what I want to know. So the, this income is sort of, uh, it, it's variable. It's right? variable. It's not guaranteed. It's not a rental agreement that you have yeah. long term, right? Where you could present that paperwork to somebody and say, look, yeah. this is what I got. This is what I'm making. And that's why uh, some, I've had some clients who have Airbnb income. <clears throat> uh, we can't use it sometimes at all. Um, like zero of that income can be used. That's why I want uh, to ask you that. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's all contingent on, on certain lenders' policies. Yeah, uh, we can use a portion of it. We can fifty uh, percent yeah. sometimes. That uh, makes it hard for the regular investor to keep growing, right? Because exactly, they- exactly, right? Because it's very, yeah. right? It's not consistent. Well, what we tell clients too, when when here's another tip for Airbnb: when you're buying an Airbnb, do not buy it under your own name. Um, try to buy it. In a in a registered yeah in a registered company company. or hold call because that limits your liability obviously right when you have to resell or you have to um, whatever the case may be even if something goes wrong God forbid something goes wrong at Mm. at at one of your properties you don't want to be personally liable for this kind of stuff so we very much encourage buying with a with a hold call obviously different circumstances right but I, I wanted to ask you Tony if somebody let's say somebody wants to buy an Airbnb under a hold call. Does it matter if it's like when you go try to get them approved for their mortgage, does it matter that they're doing Airbnb or can we just say it's an investment property or how does that work? As soon as you start doing this, Mm. right? No, oh, quotation. (laughs) What's that saying you guys have? I heard it yesterday when we were golfing. No no docs, no talks. No docs, no talks. So we like to look at those docs. uh, We got to see the whole spectrum. Uh, For us, you got to. We got to get you. We got to know what your purpose is, what your whole plan is with your with this purchase. Um, You're very nosy. That's the thing. We're <laughs> well, all up in there. You need to know everything. We're yeah. all up in I there. Know. We're all up in your in your stuff. And and it's not because I care. It's I don't care what you're doing or whatnot. I hope you. I wish you the best. It's not because I want to know and then talk about it on a podcast. It's because the lender's gonna want to know. Yeah. Right. If you uh, you owe them money in the end, right? They're lending you money and you they owe need them to know back. Everything. They yeah. need to know what's Makes going sense. on. So we need to have our our ducks in a row and um, be able to uh, disclose everything that we we do know about your intentions with the property to the lender, right? To give them that solace that, you know, okay, this is a good deal. We're good for it. Here's plan ABC and here's how they're going to, yeah. you know, 
return that money back to us in a timely it's, fashion. It's like that saying, like, you know how they say, like, oh, never lie to your lawyer or whatever the case may be. You should never lie to your mortgage broker oh, either. No, no, no. Shouldn't don't lie to us. your realtor. Not not lie, but don't hold anything back. Yeah. Tell us. Because we're, we're in it together. We're yeah, you gotta remember your realtor is working with yeah. you, right? We've had that experience where we've had a client say they, oh, we need this number to sell. Yeah. But really it's a different number. It's lower, and then we and lose the deal. Now it's too late. Like, yeah, it's too things late. happen, right? Also, I, I should mention too, if you're buying uh, an investment like an Airbnb investment, don't just go straight to the property and look at that property. Call your realtor, call them, talk to them. It costs you nothing to use a realtor to buy a property. Always remember that. Not a lot of people. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know this. For some yeah, reason. not a lot of people know this, which I find so you always weird. Always get confused. Uh, the buying or the selling all, all the time people are asking oh, how much do we owe you for like purchasing the property you owe nothing you don't pay commission when you're purchasing a property yeah. it is within your best interest to call a realtor preferably us if you want um call a realtor highly yeah. recommend <laughs> Call a realtor and get them to do their research. Get them to do the due diligence. Get them to look at it. That's their job. Yeah, I was going right? to say, that, get them to do their job. Yeah, yeah get them to the do job their job. The and the best part is you don't pay them. Yeah. You don't have to pay them. Yeah. The people that go straight to a property and buy a property, I honestly, mind boggles me. That other realtor on the other side is never going to, well, I shouldn't say never. I shouldn't say that. But Rarely. Rarely are they going to give you all the information that you need because at the end of the day, they're working for the seller. They're not working for you. The seller is their client. They're offering customer service to you. That's it. Have somebody in your corner. It's free. That's my TED talk. That's a good. That's the bottom line. That's my TED talk. That's going to be a a real for sure. It's that's, free. That's, that's, that's the, bottom. the bottom line. Should have saved that for the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's okay. We'll come back to another one. We'll, we'll come cut it and put it at the end. That's <laughs> good. No, hundred uh, percent. It, it's it's in their best interest to, to ensure they activate the right sources. Even you, do, do people, this might be a misconception. Do people pay you to work on their mortgage docs for them? Like if you're getting somebody a mortgage, do they pay you directly to get that mortgage for them? No, we, brokers get paid by the lenders. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't pay but this guy. Does everybody know that? Because like, <laughs> there's a lot of people that ask that question. Like, you know, well, we, how do you get paid? There's scenarios where there is, we, we do charge a broker fee. Yeah. Okay. However, it's it's uh it's not it's not the the norm right the norm is that we get paid a finder's fee yeah. from the lender because we found them a deal that they wouldn't uh, have gotten otherwise right yes, unless the bottom we line them. works for you don't forget that okay the, the bottom <laughs> line only works for you sorry Tom. we work for your bottom line <laughs> on the bottom line yeah, yeah. um but yeah that that's that's how I, I get compensated right from from a uh, a lender. Uh, another, I just wanted to get this out there for some, I have had clients who think that I purposely, uh, wait for rates to go up to secure them their commitment because the higher interest rate they pay, (laughs) the the more more I make. make. That's so false. I couldn't, (laughs) I I was almost uh, dumbfounded. I I didn't have the words at at that time to, to respond because I couldn't believe that's what they actually thought. They're like, Oh no, you waited for the rates to go up now. And now no, you just what, didn't give me the docs. You didn't get me the documents <laughs> in time and the interest rates went up and you know, they couldn't hold it for you, but that doesn't change how much I get paid, right? You're just, you're just paying more, but um, that's another misconception that, uh, you know, I, I don't know how common that is or yeah. how many people believe that, yeah. but the higher the interest rate, it doesn't affect my pay in any which way. So yeah, that rhymes and. Yeah. Good to know. What's Mike? What's your take on Airbnb investing? Like, is it something that people should be really looking into if they're investing, or do you think they should be looking elsewhere? What do you think? I know it's a tough question. because yeah. you can go so many ways with it, but stuff. I think if you have a primary residence and you have a couple investments already, maybe um, it's a good idea to get one. If like if you want to try something different, because it it can be mm-hmm. very lucrative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, depending on how you set it up. Yeah, like we've seen the numbers. We've been through. We've had three. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It can be very lucrative. Yeah. Yeah. while, but it does take some like some work. We should talk about our Airbnb that did really well, the one in Toronto, right on yeah. Zora there. Um, like that one was well within its its uh, scope of you know being regulated properly and everything like that. Um, but when it comes to Airbnb investing, like Mike was saying, if you do your research right and you make sure that it's not the only thing you have in your portfolio, and it's because at the end of the day, you don't want to fall on something that. Not that it's a fad. I shouldn't say that, but it's something that's ever changing, right? Something that the policies change so much. You don't mm-hmm. want you want to make sure all your eggs aren't in that basket. Hundred percent. But if 
if you do it properly, it can be super lucrative, right? Like what Mike was saying. Super right? lucrative. Super, super duper. Lucrative. If you can't deal with, you know, going to your property and seeing it in shambles, like we've seen it. Yeah. Pictures on the ground, yeah. beds and smashed. That's not all, yeah, that's not just bottles like, all yeah. over the place. It takes, yeah, it takes renting in general. When you. you're when you're a landlord, you, it could happen even with a long term yeah. rental too, right? You yeah. think, oh, I bought this place; it's beautiful. You still you give them all the furniture, you furnish it nice, and then. Uh, no, no, you know, no. they, we they, don't want to pay you for twelve months. We don't want to pay you for twelve months, and uh, yeah, we put a hole in this wall, Happens. and uh, you know the yeah. the stove is broken, and the microwave doesn't work, and the doors off the the hinges or whatnot. It's people passing away in your property. Oh yeah. my Ooh. god! Oof, just. Oof decaying for yeah. days and that happens yeah i mean things occur it's happened speed. to us not us but it's happened to it's happened, it's happened. crazy <laughs> things happen man yeah. speaking of crazy did you see uh you see messi's house oh i did see that did you see that ridiculous insane you know what else oh. is crazy the defense on Messi in the mls is garbage Garbage. Well, I didn't see it. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. What defense? Ridiculous. What scripted, defense? Yeah. What, what are you talking about? It's so scripted, man. Uh, oh, he's gonna make a pass here. Everybody's talking about Messi, a greatest yeah, goal ever. Jordi, you see Jordi Alba fly his scissor kicked in the air to yeah. give him that pass, man. That perfect. goal was, that was his Jordi goal. Alba. Yeah, hundred percent. And then he makes the pass through, and seven guys accounted. <laughs> seven <laughs> guys stood still. Time stood still for Dude, everyone, but Messi. Messi's great. I'm not saying he's not, Best but the ever? MLS is Probably. not. Yeah. The MLS yeah, is not. I'm sorry. It's but not. Do Go that. do that in Serie A. Go do that, that in Serie no B. Yeah. Go do that in Serie A B. I that. dare you, Messi. Yeah. I dare you. Yeah. Not that I could. but You couldn't even do that against Verona. I couldn't I even do that. <laughs> I couldn't even do that over here against Vanazuri under 12. Yeah. <laughs> you kidding me, bro? Yeah, see. <laughs> if, if he came through our men's league team, yeah, he'd get a couple... We get a couple of schaffs. No, we no, with our, yeah, it, it would cut. It would, you'd come out bad and bruised. Came into my him. six. I'm telling you right now. No, I'm kidding. No. Um, yeah. yeah, it's wild, man. Yeah, it's wild. So other than the Airbnb investing, there's another way you can go about. Right? Messy to Airbnb. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Sorry. Same no, he, uh, you can do uh, duplexes. Yeah. Residential duplexes, right? That's another good option. Which is something we're looking into, right? The duplexes and triplexes. Triplexes, right? Because it gives you multiple app, like multiple revenues right of of income yeah you might have three really good tenants one leaves you still have two really good tenants exactly. right yeah. you just got to find that one it's not a big hit when somebody leaves a property that they're paying four or five grand a month for when they leave it's they a big hit right? yeah, but you if, feel that if you got people paying fifteen hundred dollars each it's not as big as a hit obviously right how much it hits or not in, in terms of uh, mortgages that's also a very uh, highly recommended avenue for people mm. trying to get qualified who can't quite make it with just their income. If your realtor can find you a property in your price range that has income, uh, uh, rental income opportunities, you can use that to beef up your application, yeah. right? So uh, maybe you're going to live in the basement and rent out the upstairs or vice versa, right? You're going to live upstairs and rent out the basement. We can add in that rental income to help beef up your application. Yeah. So these are, you know, sound investments, right? Yeah. That, then eventually, over time, maybe you know you don't need to rent it out anymore, but uh, it, it helps pay off your mortgage, helps with the affordability and the qualification. Qualification uh, exactly. with rental income is very uh, beneficial. To yeah. You. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when you buy a principal place of residence that you can live upstairs and rent downstairs, when you actually go to the bank, it's a primary residence, right? Yeah. So you don't have to put 20% down. Absolutely. Right. If you're renting out a portion of the home. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that think that that might be. An great for first time home buyers. Great trying for to get first time a home buyers, right? And that's what house hacking is all about. And a lot of people, sometimes they'll, they'll rent out the basement on Airbnb, yeah. right? They'll make a little bit more instead of 1500, they're making 2,500 a month, three grand a month. Right. And then maybe they're not even paying a mortgage anymore. Maybe it's covered depending where the property is, how much the property is mm. so on and so forth. But there's ways around it, right? This kind of brings us back to like first time home buyers. There's many ways to get into the market, right? Yeah. Whether it's, you know, investing or house hacking, right? I know you're big Mike, on that. Like Mike guides a lot of his clients towards house hacking. Yeah. We find a lot of properties that have uh, a separate entrance for our clients they go in and they go, oh, but I got to paint this, but I got to put mm -hmm. the toilet, but I got to put... We have all those contacts. We yeah, have guys so that do plumbing, that. We got flooring, we, got we have all that. We got a guy. So, got a guy. What, what's that from again? That's all. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got a guy. Got a guy. Got a guy. Got a guy. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Never mind. Buddy. Don't <laughs> worry. But yeah. Well, we, we, uh, in order for it to be considered a rentable space, separate entrance, 
the uh, a bathroom, stove top, and bedroom with an egress window. Yeah, you have to say, yeah. What, what does that mean? Climb for the people who have no idea. Egress. What, egress. You got to be able to climb out that window. Gotta that's for out. sure. <laughs> it's got to open just up. Just in case something happens. Okay, just and then once, a fire or something. Yeah, right? every every municipality has a little bit more, but once you get a little bit like a little bit more regulations, but once you get you dive a little bit deeper, you can find rated right drywall, so yeah. on and so forth, right? Yeah. But those are things. Most detectors, yeah. it's not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We touched on Airbnb. We touched on qualification. We talked on talked about interest rates and what impacts those interest rates. But um, we're about to wrap it up. So, Mike, what's your bottom line for today's episode? My bottom line is. Don't believe all the bullshit you see on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> As always. <These> 15000 <laughs> a month. Don't believe those Airbnbs. Yeah, I make twenty grand a month on my Airbnb. No, don't look at that shit. Um, don't listen to all the, the stuff online, except for our podcast. Yeah. Ours are really good. We got those, good stuff. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, that's my bottom line. <laughs> those are rookie numbers. What's that? <laughs> Lion and Wolf of Wall Street? Pump those numbers up. Pump those numbers yeah, up. Pump those numbers up. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say Luke? my my bottom line, if you're looking to invest in into an Airbnb, uh, Call somebody who's looking out for your best interest because it's not cookie cutter. It's very, very different for every municipality, whether it's Vaughn, Blue Mountain, Wasega, Muskoka, doesn't matter where you are, Niagara, whatever the region is, make sure you have somebody who's working for you and understands the bylaws because it's very, very important that you understand how to invest in Airbnb because you could get stuck like a situation that Mike and I were in when we were young and dumb and got into a little pickle yeah like got into a little pickle but that was like seven eight years ago but figured it out we figured it there's out right? there's always ways around it, anyways so. don't make that same mistake yeah. obviously please and that's the you. bottom line that's the bottom line <laughs> call somebody you can trust tony what's uh what's your bottom my line? bottom line i got two i got two bottom lines one bottom line is interest rates are going to go up they're going to go down but you can always be in touch with the mortgage uh, agent who's going to get you ahead of the game and make sure that you're in the best position possible based on where the rates are at. My number two bottom line is that the MLS absolutely sucks. <laughs> and that's why Messi is looking like the god that he is. But the MLS absolutely sucks. You're he talking never about- do that in Serie A or Serie B. Okay. <laughs> That's my that's my two cents. Uh, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom lines for you. You're talking about the major league soccer, not the multiple listing service MLS, yeah. right? Yeah. No, okay. no, 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 no. Okay. Major league right shit. Okay, okay, okay. Major league shit. Uh, that's that's what we. we yes, stuff. I t- just wanted to clarify, just in case. Yeah, you we know? got TFC tickets this year. We haven't seen it. We barely see a goal score. Oh my! Man. Let's yeah. get. Serious. Wasn't there like a month and a half where they didn't score? A they goal? didn't score. I don't want to talk about it. We have three wins. We have tickets. Three wins? I think tonight that we're not going. <laughs> Throw them in the garbage, <laughs> buddy. Throw them in the garbage. TFC tickets? No, I'm kidding. Um, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Thank you guys for tuning in to episode four of the bottom line podcast. We really appreciate all you guys for listening, following and watching, and we hope to see you on the next one. Take care.